in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us. A Portuguese woman in the 13th century was being oppressed by a demon, and it was so bad that she decided to commit suicide by drowning herself in the river. On her way there, she passed a shrine dedicated to St. Anthony of Padua, the great preacher and wonder worker. Now, since then, he's even been made a doctor of the church. And one last time, she stopped to pray. As she prayed, she saw St. Anthony standing there saying, Arise, woman, and take this paper, which will free you from the molestations of the evil one. And he gave her a parchment upon which was written what is now known as St. Anthony's Brief. From that moment, she was freed from demonic oppression and from the desire to kill herself. The brief depicts a cross with Latin text in the form of a poetic exorcism prayer taken largely from Apocalypse, aka Revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. Copies have been made and spread throughout the world, and the prayer is known to be a powerful exorcism that all the faithful may use against temptation and oppression. The original Latin text and English translations follow. Ecce crucem domini, that is, behold the cross of the Lord. Fugite partes adverse, flee ye who have cited in opposition to it. Vicit leo de tribu Iuda, radix David, alleluia. That is, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has vanquished, alleluia. Again, in the Latin, ecce crucem domini, fugite partes adverse, vicit leo de tribu Iuda, radix David, alleluia. In the second line, partes adverse literally means adverse parts or opposing sides, giving the idea of enemy factions but with an extra nuance. And to try to get that nuance and to be more faithful, especially since there are direct words for both enemies, inimici, and factions, facciones, the closest I can get to it in English is ye who have cited in opposition to the Lord and his holy cross. So I've shortened that here. Behold, one of the reasons that I find it ideal to stick with the original in the profound, powerful, and beautiful language of Christ's church. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for subscribing and for your helpful comments and suggestions. God bless. Et oremus pro invicem.